Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, sorry. Uh, I think we are ready to start. So welcome to the Def developer conference to the second day. Um, let me introduce Steph Walters, who will tell you something about Cockpit. He works for Red Hat and um, does a lot of things in open source. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming so early and, and braving. Is it on? Yeah. And braving this groggy day to show up. Um, yeah, so I'm really interested in polishing the open source stuff that we produce, making it usable. Oh, sorry. Making it usable, coherent, and kind of bringing it together. So a bunch of us have been working on a project called Cockpit. And I'd like to introduce it to you today. Uh, I hope that it's not going to be too boring. At some point, we'll probably have a deep dive that goes into all the details and wonderful things. But for now, I want to share with you like kind of where we're going, a bit about the architecture, why this, this exists, whatever is it for, and so on. So this is about servers. But before we go into that, we're going to have to have an analogy. Sorry. It's not about cars, it's about trucks. Because, you know, servers are trucks. So deploying Linux servers today is like building your own truck. You get a bunch of parts, you get an engine, a transmission, and so on, and then you can kind of build it into what you want. Now this results in some really powerful trucks, purpose-built for the task that they, they are required for, right? They can do amazing things. I mean, you all know, like half the internet runs on Linux, right? You can, you can build your own truck factory, kind of instantiate your trucks as necessary. You can do things that seem pretty impossible to people who haven't, who haven't uh, kind of gotten intimate with Linux and the broad power that it affords. You can virtualize. You can do things that other people don't think are a good idea, <laughs> right? You can build trucks that even when they're completely overloaded and overwhelmed, they still kind of get the job done. You can build really optimized servers, and of course you can botch it all up and just do it all wrong, <laughs> right? So, but there's one thing that's really hard to do. What if you just want to drive the truck? What if you don't want to get involved in building it? Now, I know this seems suboptimal to us. It's obviously, when you think about it, best if you know about all the internals of the truck that you're driving or going to use and how to fix it, how to maintain it. And if you were involved in building that, nobody knows it better than you. But a lot of people, for a lot of people, that learning curve is just too steep to get there straight up. And it takes people with dedication, people with passion and interest to some extent, or are someone forcing that person to learn all that and to get involved that deeply. This is what it looks like to drive Windows, right? So this is the Windows Server Manager interface, and people sort of pop this up and start doing stuff. This is what it looks like to drive Linux. Now, to us, that looks like, oh, well, endless possibilities. I'm root. I can do anything. The world is mine. But to people, other people, that looks like this, <laughs> right? It's kind of, yeah, a, a non-starter. So Linux should be discoverable and configurable by non-experts. And that is not to say that we don't want to encourage people to become experts, right? We want people to become experts. But if we expect them to become experts before they touch Linux, that's rough. So Cockpit is a discoverable space for Linux servers. That's what we want it to be. That's, it's a UI for Linux servers. And a bunch of us have done uh, some work on, on figuring out how we want to do this and 
where we want to, what we want to expose and what should be in here and there's lots of discussions and talks and we've actually come up with a proof of concept. We came up with mock-ups and we have a great designer, Andreas, with us working with us and, and, and other people are, are helping from the UX team to get this right. And so I want to show you the kind of the proof of concept that we've built uh, so far. And uh, it's kind of demonstrating like we can do this. What we've done here is build all the architecture that we wanted to use and pulled off managing a bunch of stuff, not necessarily the way that it's supposed to eventually look, but so when, when you see the, I'm going to show you a video, when you see it, just keep that in mind. So, Cockpit is a web app that runs in your web browser, and I'll, I'll explain how that works a bit more in architecture later. And you can see in our proof of concept, you can do various things, obviously trivial stuff, like information about the system, changing the, the host name and so on. Part of what we want is on this dashboard here, you can kind of see the state of the server when you connect to it. That's kind of the default thing, like what's going on on this server? And we're, we're going to expand that, make it really a lot more useful, that initial page bringing alerts and, and critical messages there. So these are all the services <coughs> that System D knows about, and you can do all sorts of things to them. Those are the logs related to the service. And yeah, all your basic system control operations that you would look up in the man page, you can kind of find here. You can configure, oh yeah, we have a great journal browser that we've kind of, it, <coughs> it streams messages as they come in so you can see them and you can filter them and look at them. Yeah, look at their details and so on. Right, configure the network. I think that wasn't working when someone when we were recording this, so we just moved along. But yes. <laughs> but yeah, you doing LVM, uh, configuration of RAIDs, those sorts of things are all things that we included in our proof of concept to make sure that, okay, we can pull this off. This is possible how we want to do it. basic user account management and so on. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, okay, so you get the idea, right? You can also do things like uh, shut down the server, restart it, and so on. So this proof of concept is in Fedora now. Actually, as of two days ago, you can install it. You can try it out. If you're giving a talk today, don't do these things, okay? <laughs> 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 but so th you, can, you can try and see how it interacts with your system, and it's socket activated, it, it should work. As you can see, um, we needed to get it into Fedora before we could work on the SE Linux stuff, so the SE Linux stuff is not done, but that's definitely something we need to work in in the presence of enforcing mode, for sure. So how does that all work? How do we do that? Is there a bunch? So 
So here's, here's kind of the architecture. I'm going to leave this slide up for a little while because it's pretty involved. But basically, we run in the web browser. None of the GUI stuff is running on the server. Everything is happening on the web browser. It's JavaScript, modern application running in the web browser, and it connects back to itself, essentially, via a web socket. So the process that you see there, Cockpit WS, serves a bit bunch of static HTML and JavaScript. And then everything else happens in the web browser. There's a connection back via WebSocket. And we pass messages over that. Dbus messages, XML messages. Uh, right now, in the proof of concept, we didn't go past Dbus, but definitely passing uh, sim messages and rest messages, not a big deal. We pass them back, and then we, there's, we run an actual login session for the user. So it's as if they, it, it, they reported as logged in, as if they had logged in via SSH uh, or, or some other mechanism. You can see the blue, the blue uh, colored boxes are running as the user with the correct login UID for auditing and so on. And uh, what we can do as well is have one server connect out to others so you can see the, see the state of multiple servers at once. That wasn't in the video, I'm sorry, but Basically, you have a dashboard where you can see multiple servers in their state, and we try to correlate a bunch of things together from there. And some of our features make use of that, so, so you can kind of have an overview of a bunch of servers at once. Um, yeah, and then we talk to your basic configuration services, your network manager or system D or uh, Realm D, UDIS, and so on, in order to actually implement the, the functionality. So all of the things you see here, I mean, most of them, are socket activated or start on demand, dbus activated. So we really don't want to be loading down the server unnecessarily. And I'll talk more about that later. Does anyone want uh, any further explanation of what's here? I mean, obviously, yeah? You can do either root or an ordinary user. If root is allowed to log into the system, which by default on RHEL and Fedora they are, then yes, you can log in as root. We, we, I'll talk more about this later, but we are, we are not some kind of management console that sits on top of the system and does things differently. We expose the authentication and the authorization and so on on the system itself. So if you don't want root to log in, then you change your, you might set your root password to star, you might use another method for denying uh, root authentication and use other accounts, but we, we support uh, wheel accounts. We use poll kits so that they can do privilege escalation, so that they can do the things that they need to do and so on. Yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, so one of the benefits of this is that let's say you have one, you're, you have a bunch of servers behind NAT or be behind the strong firewall or <coughs> behind the DMZ, and you have one that's kind of a bastion host that you connect to and then connect to the others. We support that mode very well, and that you load the web interface from one of them, and then it connects out to the others uh, that you couldn't access directly. So overall, I'm going to talk about goals now, because obviously you can turn this into a lot of wild and crazy things. You can, you know, the possibilities are endless, but we have some pretty defined goals and ethos and things that are going to drive this project forward and provide the direction. So here they are. Obviously, one of them, the main one, is that we need to be discoverable. Users should be able to kind of log in, and given, given sysadmin experience or some experience, figure out the concepts and what, what it is they need to do. So. We don't have help pages, and we might have some tool tips, but we don't, we, don't, we don't want to have help pages, really. We want this to be intuitive and discoverable. For example, this, sorry to pick on LVM, but this is the LVM, LV create command, just one of the many, and you have to do a lot of reading, so it's not really discoverable. Everything's there, well documented, but discoverable is not what you would call it. 
Another goal, we want to play well with others. We don't want to be uh, kind of a silo uh, uh, of all the state of the system, the configuration of the system. We don't want to hold that tightly. It, uh, for example, previously, I know OSConfig has gotten better, but previously OSConfig sort of owned the PAM stack and owned N nssswitch.conf. And if you modified them outside of it, it would say no. That's not what we want to do. It's difficult to do this, but we want you to be able to modify stuff by SSH, other tools, Puppet, and, and satellite managing the system. And we react to those changes, and we respect them, and, and we interact well with them. So here's, a g here's an example of that. So we're, this is the user accounts page. A user's being created on the system, and Cockpit knows about it, and vice versa. Except for that's the wrong command, but yes. <laughs> Another goal. Server admins are picky people. They, they're, they're micromanage their servers for a good reason, right? Um, so we want to be lightweight. A, a, a server that's running most of its life is not being configured, is not displaying a UI, is doing what it's tasked to do. We help people ser uh, set up the server, then we help people troubleshoot it, and so on. But between those times, we don't want to be running and loading down the server, running a bunch of processes, and so on. So in order to have, we want to be we want to, with a straight face, be able to say, you should have us on by default. You should have us on by default when you build Fedora Server, when the Fedora Server Working Group uh, puts together that thing, or in RHEL. We should be on, we should be able to operate in that environment with those requirements. So, we've been working to make a bunch of cockpit kind of shut down when it's not in use and and not not just hang around, have its agents not hang around, and so on. But we need your help. If you're writing a system debug service, you need to think about how to make, and, and, and that service is going to be used on the server. Cockpit will probably make use of it. You need to think about how you can go away when nothing is happening, when you're not configuring something. Now, some debug services obviously are performing a useful function their whole lives, and they're around for a reason. But others do a bit of configuration and then just sort of sit back. And they might like poll or something useless, right? That's not what we want. So currently, if you, if you have a stateless daemon, um, it's totally possible to make it go away without, without any races or any, any of these strange things you might have heard of. Unfortunately, if you have a, a diva service that, that, that has a lot of state, then it's difficult right now, but with KDBus, it is, they are actually designing this in so that there's a mechanism for asking the system, is, if no one else is calling me, I want to go away, and it'll answer yes or no, and then you can do that. And it'll, as an atomic operation, close your DBus connection and actually go away. Yeah? Yeah, so there are some interim solutions, but really that's the end game. So we want to get there. We want to be ad hoc. We want you to be able to bring up a single server with cockpit on it, and it just works. So you don't have to invest in like, oh, here's my cockpit management system. No, that's not at all. Why did I even say that? That doesn't exist. Cockpit runs on the system and exposes the system. It's a, it's a user interface, right? So we don't want to have to <coughs> depend on you first setting up some initial infrastructure on your network in order to use cockpit. On the other hand, if you have infrastructure set up, and it's, it's decent, like not just like homegrown whatever, like for example a domain, we want to make really good use of it. So on that, that domain authentication is really important for a single sign-on so that you can manage your servers in a directory, make them work really well there. Um, obviously logging, logging in via Kerberos and so on are things that uh, some, some of that is already exists, but we really want to make it polished and, and work really well. We want to be able to also, if you don't have some of these kind of 
best practice things, like let's say you don't have a domain, and you're just setting up servers, and now you have a few of them. We want to be able to help you to say, look, I'm sick and tired of managing users and passwords and so on. We want Cockpit to, to offer, make one of your servers a domain controller, and then we'll help you. We'll help you install free IPA there and sort of give that server a role and, and get you started with infrastructure that wouldn't otherwise exist. And the same goes for things like monitoring. The same goes for things like configuration management. We want to help you set up a puppet master if that's what you want to do, right? And help you get started with Foreman and so on. We're not trying to reinvent configuration management. We know many people are busy reinventing configuration management. Some good, some not so good. And we want to help people use what's there rather than try and have cockpit, have a concept of, oh, I'm templates and, and, and various roles for different servers, various things that, various uh, auto automation of bringing servers into different states and, and so on, and in, uh, instantiating servers and those things. There's lots of good solutions for that already, so we want to help people use them. Sometimes we want to be opinionated. When there's a really good way to do things, Cockpit will support that way. And uh, there's obviously a hundred different ways you can do it differently. They already exist, right? So when we're guiding people and making the stuff discoverable and there's an obvious candidate for the best way to do it, that's what we want to choose. And we're not, oops. We're not an API. There's, there's projects like OpenLMI that are working on that specifically. Um, so you, you wouldn't necessarily connect to Cockpit from a script to manage your server, let's say. That, there's other ways to make that happen. And the OpenLMI guys are working hard to try and make that as painless as possible. But we want to be pluggable. We want to be able to have all the bits of of UI that people like you can think of for the stuff you're working on. You could prototype it, you could put it together, and it would show up in Cockpit. And we'll help you find a way to do it, make it look right, use the right JavaScript toolkit, and put the right stuff on the server to make that happen. And we'll provide the transport, obviously, to connect the two pieces and so on. And we're going to heavily use that uh, functionality and technology ourselves, this kind of modular, bringing pieces of the UI from different places. So we're going to eat our own dog food there, and hopefully other people can. If you're, if you're really interested in, uh, in being one of the first guinea pigs for this, or kind of providing feedback on it, I'd love to hear from you, because we're starting work on trying to make it modular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, right now in the proof of concept, it's not, but it's definitely one of our stated goals that we want that to be possible. So you would write probably either a REST service or a DBus service, and it would be socket activated, remember? Shouldn't be running all the time, but whenever it's relevant on that server. And you would give us, a f uh, via DBus, a piece of UI, HTML and JavaScript, which we're working out how that, exactly how that works, the, the best way to do that. And we would integrate that in and provide you the authenticated connection back to communicate with yourself and, and so on. So obviously, this is open source. It's on GitHub. Um, there's an issue tracker there as well. There's all we are working out in the open there. Um, we have our mailing list. And you're definitely welcome to join in or peek and see what's going on. And uh, we, we, uh, now that we're taking this past the proof of concept, we, of course, are really uh, interested in hearing from any of you guys who want to integrate stuff in or want to contribute or, or want to tell us that, hey, the way that you're doing that is not the right way to do it. Like, if we're managing LVM wrong and you're LVM you on the LVM team, there's a better way to do it, like the best practice way that you want... That you want uh, people to discover, right? Because there's a hundred ways to do things. But there's usually one way that you want to guide people towards the best practice way. And if you want to help us um, as, we're, as we're kind of bringing those into the interface, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So that was it.
I hope that was interesting and, and uh, some food for thought. But I'd love to talk with you about it if you have questions. Yes? So the question is, if uh, what is the relation to OpenLMI, and if we uh, make all our calls through OpenLMI, or if we kind of use the same services as OpenLMI does? And currently, we use the same services. So uh, by and large, we use the same services. So OpenLMI will use Network Manager, and we'll use Network Manager, and therefore we both see the state of the system, the same changes, and so on. But we've definitely been discussing how can, I if there is some compelling uh, part of OpenLMI, you know, where it's, it's, it's not just a layer, but it actually has functionality, then we definitely want to use it, right? We definitely want to make those calls via, via SIM in order to consume that. Um, not, not right now. I mean, something might change in the future, but that's not, not an immediate thing to do all the calls through OpenLMI right now. Right. Right. Yeah. We don't want to uh, back to our previous point. We want to show something consistent. So we definitely wa don't want OpenLMI to show one set of network interfaces and we show a different set. For example, or so th there are places where we need to converge on one thing below, like, and I think in storage, and we've been talking a lot about that. Yeah. Sure, sure. I, I have a video of it. Um, Yeah, uh, it's proof of concept though, so we're gonna do much more cool stuff with this than what, you, what you're about to see. Let me see. So the question was, can we see the multi-server demo? So here you can see one server all as well. So this is a multi-server dashboard. Right now we just have a list. And as a proof of concept, we sort of brought in some properties of the server, um, monitoring the CPU and, and showing the, the name and so on. What's happening here? Sorry. Oh yeah, we're looking at the address. That's, that's fine. Was there a better? So yeah, you can go in. And this is for the VM as well as the CPU. Right. But Right. But there was some. Yeah, I'm sorry that I don't have a better demo of, of a whole list of servers. We're calling that the dashboard. And we want to bring in relevant state across all the servers as well. So so if there's, thank you. So if there's, for example, uh, you look at the storage across all your systems and you see which servers are full. There's a lot of these things, like you want to see the state of, of all of these, uh, of all your servers, see what roles you've assigned to them. Um, correlate the logs between them. 
um, that kind of stuff they want to do on the dashboard. And so far, we've kind of brought in the proof of concept that we can do this technology-wise, but you don't see a lot of the features that we that we're looking for. That's a good question. <coughs> yes. Yeah, so the question is, do we want to gather data historically? And what kind of what we've been working with so far in Cockpit is that no, Cockpit shouldn't be the one. We want to help people install PCP on one of their servers and then start gathering historical uh, performance data. We want to help people generate a, build a central logging server as one of the server roles that I was talking about and start sending all the logs there. We tell all the other servers we configure them and say, let's send your logs here. Um, and a question, of course, whether we're going to do that with the syslog protocol or the batching from journal, fr from the journal. We need to figure out what we want to help people discover. But uh, yeah, so we. We're definitely not in the business of trying to reinvent everything. And we totally respect that the work that's already been done on some of these really hard problems. All right. Any other questions? Yes, back here. Uh, yeah, totally. The, one of our pretty soon on our roadmap is being able to manage Docker containers um, in your in your basic like a basic uh, interface to the various Docker commands that, that Alex was showing you the other day. Uh, and then the question is, like, where do we go from there? And we've had a lot of discussion, but we need to figure out beyond that. All right. Cool. Yeah? Oh, one more question. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, we connected by SSH, okay. and we talked basically the same, sent the same messages. Instead of sending them over SSL, we forwarded them. Let's go back to the architecture. Those red things that you see there are SSH, and we pass the messages by SSH to uh, the other machine, and then they get passed out to the system bus and the local services and so on. Right. Yeah, it works pretty well. Yeah, it, it got auto-started. It started running. I, when you look at the machines that are not serving the HTML and JavaScript, you can see that the cockpit WS component is not running. It's not needed at that point. But if you were to connect to those directly, then that piece would start up just fine. Oh, one more back there. Yeah, that's a good, okay, so the question is about using Ansible. Um, and like I said, uh, we want to help people set up a good configuration management story on their network if they don't already have one. So if people want to start uh, managing their servers that way, right, through templating, through automation, um, and we need to figure out kind of what we want to, what we want to help people discover there, whether it's Ansible, whether it's Puppet, and so on. That's, but we don't directly want to consume those things in order to manage servers. We're, we're interacting with the server directly. We're an interactive way of, of, ma of ch changing the configuration on the server, showing its state, and so on. Does that answer the question? That's a very good question. So how do we handle different versions of the OS uh, let's say one was RHEL 6, one was RHEL 7, one was Fedora, how would we display a UI that's coherent? So what we've been talking about is using the, the, the modularity stuff that we were kind of discussing earlier to do that. So that parts of the UI that come from the RHEL 6 server have RHEL 6 specific logic in them 
and are able to use consume, for example, they won't be consuming system B. So I'll provide an interface for uh, the system service or the upstart services. Um, and probably less, uh, less UI, less capabilities, that's fine. Then there's the multi-server features. Like we were saying, we want to be able to show some of the state for multiple servers and do something like on the dashboard against multiple servers. Those we'll have to build abstractions for and kind of really think hard, harder about. So we've, we've, we've uh, made life easier on ourselves by making some of the, the UI be server specific. Yeah, one more question. Uh, well, we sort of imagined, okay, so the question is, what about other Linuxes? Not RHEL, not Fedora. So the, so the, uh, we sort of imagined that because we're going to be able to manage different kinds of RHEL, different kinds of Fedora, which are pretty different when you, you know, on some of these implementation details, for example, some of Network Manager, some don't, so on, that, that we have all the ability and the infrastructure not to be limited only to to Rel and Fedora. And we'd like to see the community grow and be able to expand this beyond that. <coughs> of course, that requires interaction. Like, if we can, uh, you know, uh, when we're not against that, and, and we, are, we, we want to support it. But obviously, the few of us that are here can't pull off, oh, let's write something for every possible distro everywhere. So we really want to engage with people who are interested in that. Yes. Um, we're not we're not going to make every single feature be multi-server. So the question is, uh, are we going to run commands across multiple servers? And we have to be careful there. It's it's not trivial to get that right. Like. For certain operations, yes. For uh, indefinite operations like yum upgrade, you can basically tell all your servers, oh, upgrade's the latest thing you know about. Fine. And if some of the servers maybe weren't online or didn't really, some error happened, you can do it again. And eventually everything's in that state. But if you have commands that if you do them twice, something would break or that kind of stuff, we have to be very careful and leave those tasks to setting up a configuration management system. So we think very carefully about the multi-server stuff that we implement and make sure that we can kind of uh, cast the checks that a mouse makes or whatever we're supposed to say there. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Okay, we're out of time. There's the guys who helped pull off all of us together, pulled off the proof of concept, are here. So you can talk with us. You can, you know, join in. Thank you. Thank you.
Huh? Yeah, you, you've defined stuff in... Uh, yeah, I've probably tried it. Like, I will try it both for, for oh, okay. the day. <laughs> well, that was for listening. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't install cockpit? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll microphone yeah. you. Okay, let's turn it off first.